As I was just walking in into the synagogue or community center, I just saw two words that uh, catch my attention. One is the Deuteronomy, God's covenant with uh, with the Jewish people. There is a covenant. And uh, that gave me a clue about what I was uh, going to do for you. We have to enter into a covenant, a contract, a divine contract. And you have to fulfill that. And that is very, very important. If you don't lose your consciousness, then nothing will go wrong. Everything goes wrong we are, because we are losing our consciousness, consciousness <coughs> constantly. Constantly, we think about unimportant things. Even people who, are, who don't have money, and they are unable to pay their rent because this is mostly the people who come to see me are not rich people, are people who are very, very spiritual. And they want God. But what happens is they think about God, seminars, reading books, but never think about the pressing needs. And this is something that you need to correct because this world is organized differently. You have, not that you have to become a millionaire, but at least you should focus attention on your needs and whether you have met the needs. And for that, you have to be very, very conscious. There are a few things that you have to understand here. Who knocks down your consciousness and makes you spacey? <laughs> you have to understand that if you become spacey, you cannot manifest. Then you will become unrealistic. If you are spacey, you will become unrealistic. Most spiritual people are spacey. <laughs> and unrealistic. And this is something that you have to stop and take control of yourself. That is very, very important. Whether you are real or not, you have to constantly keep questioning. Because the rule is, whatever you think is the reality. If you are spacey all the time, then you will ma manifest only spacey things. If you are material all the time, you, ma you may manifest material things. I was in New York two, three weeks ago. And I was told that there was a guy who made $4 million a month as salary. And I was told there are several people in New York who make that kind of money. But why is it, it is very difficult even to make $4,000 for other people? Not that you have to make $10,000, just a $4,000, that's enough to cover your modest bills. There are many people who don't even have that.
the difference between the four million guy and the four thousand guy is only a matter of what he thinks. The spacey people think even forty million. I want forty million dollars a month. There are many people who have come and told me I want forty million dollars a month, and they never even think that it is unrealistic. So you should never, ever forget the reality. This world has its own reality. Unless you are in a place where you can change the reality, I will tell you. I just came here, and somebody opened the radio station, and then um, they put all the money they had. Invested it and put together a radio station, but they did not have operational money. And I was in the radio station, and then I said, "They told me the problem." The following day, money for six months operation showed up for six months. Just before walking into this hall, I said that person, you know, although there is six months money for operation, don't go to sleep. <clears throat> you need to raise more money for marketing, and you need to do more. Think about what you're going to do after six months. The reason why I am saying that, if you get into that field of consciousness, wherein you will have the ability to manifest anything that you want to manifest. At that level, it doesn't matter if it is a four million dollar or a four thousand dollar. I do not judge you by money. I judge you by your real wealth. Your real wealth is you have God. You have just come here to see me, and that shows your commitment. You need a little adjustment here, and that adjustment <coughs> is to learn what mistakes you are doing. What are the mistakes you are doing? And that is losing consciousness. You should never ever lose consciousness. If you don't lose consciousness, you will not die. Even death, old age will not hit you. But you have to have that kind of consciousness. And I have a covenant with you, a contract. As I walked in, I put my own contract in place that I would protect you. I will. But then you have to live up to the contract. The, co the covenant here is. You don't want to lose your consciousness. That's very, very important. You do not know how flexible things are. Things are not like solid. They are not written in stone. There is great amount of flexibility here for you to go and alter the things that you want to alter. There's tremendous amount of flexibility. But you are 
not allowing things to happen by just holding on to a negative reality. I am broke. There is recession. There are no jobs. People are losing their houses. <clears throat> I'm not saying that these are not uh, true. They are true. But you can raise above all of them. Provided you keep the contract, if the covenant is be conscious. The first thing that I want to teach you is to get some divine help. Everybody faces obstacles in life. There's nobody who doesn't face obstacles. An obstacle is something that you do not see when you start a project. You start a project and you don't see the object, uh, the obstacle. It shows up later on. We can only conceptualize, well, these things can go wrong. But you, for instance, nobody expected that the market will collapse like this. But there are people whom I know just sold their properties and converted all their cash, money, the stocks into cash, too. There has been divine help for them. So you need divine help. And the divine help, the first divine help is, <coughs> comes from a being called Ganesha, the elephant-headed god. And there is a sound for him, the mantra for him. Before you start anything, just say gum, G-U-M, gum, 27 times. The obstacles will miraculously disappear. Anything that you want to do, because there will be obstacles, you know, of different kinds. If you say it's 27 times gum, 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 then he will come and protect you from obstacles. Even for meditation, you know, if you want to sit down to meditate, Numerous thoughts will come, and you won't have any more uh, desire to sit, continue with the meditation. You just want to get up and go and do something else, watch TV or something. <laughs> See, in this world, watching TV is more enjoyable than meditating with the mantra. That's why people meditate, watch TV all the time. So everything that is destructive is enjoyable, like alcohol. You take a glass of wine, okay, you feel so good, then you take another glass. Okay. Although it, everybody knows that it kills the brain cells. Hmm. But still we keep doing, but everything that is enjoyable, like, uh, like potato chips, <laughs> are French fries. What are you going to do? You have to really, really have no desire for this, and then if you have more consciousness inside, you won't be able to go and touch this. So there should be some divine help 
inside. That comes you to stay away from things that are not productive. From September onwards, I have decided that I'm going to go back to India and be in seclusion for four days in a week and only three days in action. The reason why I decided to do this was because I can be more productive to the world. If I don't go about and teach seminars, and waste my time. The best way I can spend my time is I can go into this subtle field and from which I can do whatever I want to do in a much more efficient way than I do by doing things from outside. Working with material world is very difficult. The guy whom I mentioned about uh, making four million dollar a month is only has an undergraduate degree, and then there are others who don't even have that education. And what, what happened was that they were able to go, not in this lifetime, but in another lifetime, and began to conceptualize that. This is what I told Wayne Dyer many years ago. You cannot manifest that which you cannot conceptualize. So you must be able to conceptualize. Yes, it's possible. And that conceptualization will come to you when you go very deep, 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 deep in your meditation. And from that level, you do not know whether you are thinking or, you are not, or not thinking at that level you have the maximum power. I'm going to give you something which has not been given <coughs> before, a very important mantra. And I will give you the history of this month. There was a lifetime that's about 14th century that I was on the earth plane. And I won't talk to anyone, I was, I only kept on meditating, meditating, meditating. But I developed omniscience. <clears throat> One day my guru called me and he came to know that I had omniscience. And I knew everything. Not only I knew everything, I could do everything also. But my guru had only omniscience, but he did not have omnipotence. And he told me, now I have, you have just surpassed me. You don't have to be with me. So you have to leave. But I protested that I, you know, it was due to his grace I got it. But he said, no, that's fine, but uh, there's no need for you to be here. It's quite embarrassing for me to be here, so. <laughs> <laughs> just leave. So I left, but I had a 
I had a sp Siddhi power, Siddhi, a miraculous power in that lifetime that I had acquired. And that was, uh, I would be sitting here and meditating. And I don't care where I, where I sit. And people who come here in front of me, would be drawn to write a check or donate some money or put some jewelry in front of me. I wouldn't ask because I am not even in consciousness. Say they will keep huge amount of jewelry, money, everything. And when I wake up in the, from my meditation, I will see this money and jewelry, but I would, I had no desire for that. So I would, um, I would not take it. Whoever comes and then I will tell them, take it. <coughs> this is no good. And I used to call that money as people killer. This is people killer. Why are they here? I was say staying in a uh, in a city, and I was meditating. And the temple had a lot of financial needs. It's a temple of the dancing Shiva called Chidambaram. So the God appeared. The God doesn't talk to you in person. He can only come in dream or in meditation. So he came in the dreams of the priests and said, look, if you want money for renovation of the temple, you have to go get this guy. Because wherever he is, money will come. And then they came and they approached me and then they asked me to come and come to the temple and sit there. I refused. No, I'm not going to come. Then, um, so they just went and prayed to Shiva, this guy is not coming, so what can we do? No, Shiva said, I will do something. So I went to him and as a beggar and asked for food. And I told him, I don't have food myself, how can I give it to you? Whenever I have, I needed food, I have to pray to the goddess and she will come and bring me food. And that's how I survive. And uh, it'll be too much for me to ask food for you also, but one time I will do that. But then, they, to me, it's a long story, uh, to make it short. Then uh, I gave him some food and then in front of me he vanished. Then I began to understand that this was Lord Shiva himself. Then the temple priest came and asked him again, will you consider coming again um, one more time? So I agreed and I went there and sat there. And that money started like uh, pouring down like anything because I was there. I did not know anything about my previous life, particularly this uh, incarnation. There was a special palm leaf reading that I had asked a question. What is, you know, I just want to do a lot of projects here. Uh, but I need money for that. What do I need to do? So don't think that you have the problem, I have the problem too. <laughs> <laughs> so when I asked this question, it came, the, the leaves said, all that you need to do is just to bring into your memory 
your lifetime as Guru Namah Shivaya. I, that na in that lifetime, I was named, known as Guru Namah Shivaya. So if you bring his consciousness <coughs> in your memory, right? then you don't have to go and ask for money, then, then money will come. So when I got this, then I be, uh, began to use this, and this has been quite interesting, many, many interesting things happening. I had invitations from people who are, who is the richest uh, billionaires. So I'm going to give that mantra to you so that I, this was, uh, a special Rudraksha that he had in possession, that I went in search of this, and he himself used it. So I got hold of this one, uh, which I am using. <coughs> and this Rudraksha, I have to tell you, Rudraksha is the beads, uh, is a special bead. And this is about the tears of God, the God tears of Shiva, because he is compassionate. He knows that the human life, like the Buddha, the human life is suffering. Whether you are a rich man or a poor man, that's why we, I recommend that people wear this uh, Rudraksha beads in order to get beyond suffering. So I'm going to give you that mantra so that you can also manifest without having to go and ask for anything. Asking is very difficult. Even if you ask, people are not going to give. <laughs> That's the truth. Okay, first of all, it's very difficult to go and ask for money from someone. Second of all, even if you ask, not many people are going to give, even if they have the money. So something has to happen that they have to offer you without your asking for it. That's the best scenario. And that's a special power that I had in that lifetime. So that I wanted to share with you and so that you will have uh, some divine help from that. so many meditations, but this one that I have just taught you is the best. It has more power than anything that I have done, because this is not your doing. This is the doing of Guru Namah Shivaya, who just maintain this consciousness so that it can be passed on to everyone, so that everyone will have the ability to do that. The other day I was watching television. I don't turn on the television for no reason. For weeks I will not turn on the television, but then sometimes I will go and turn on the television. And this I did it about a week ago in San Diego. I just went into uh, a Christian channel. And there he was, there was uh, two guys, Benny Hinn and Oral Roberts. Okay. And uh, 
How many of you have known about Benny Hinn? Oral Roberts? More people, Oral Roberts. And they were on the show. And they were raising money. <laughs> and uh, and Oral Roberts was helping Benny Hinn to raise more money for the television shows. And he go, you know, Benny Hinn goes all over the world, uh, the, the Crusades. Or, um, and Oral Roberts came to pray. He was praying for Benny Hinn, and he was asking people to donate more money so that uh, Benny Hinn can do more teaching of the Gospels. And when Benny Hinn, when Oral Roberts, uh, he's 91 years old, but he's still very healthy. He was literally crying. He was crying. And when he called on Jesus, he was literally crying. Jesus, you have to bring this money to Benny in. And he is doing you know, your work, spreading the gospel. I know you are a mighty God, you can do that. And he was literally crying. I don't discriminate religions. The methodology is the same. The reason why I use Guru Namah Shivaya instead of someone else is because I am in charge of that energy because I have been Guru Namah Shivaya. So I can directly pass on this power to you and enter into a covenant with you. Covenants are very important. The covenant is you just keep chanting this and without asking for it, money will come to you. You know, you have done so many things, going to seminars, reading many books, but what's the outcome? And you have been doing this for 10 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. I have been trying, to, so many people who come to say I have been trying to fix my financial problem for the past 25, 30 years, and nothing has happened. But this time, enter into a covenant. The covenant is you will keep chanting it. The more you chant, whether you do it mentally or out aloud, it's, it's okay. You will have miracles happening. So people will show up and say, yeah, hey, here it is. <laughs> because uh, it's your ego is not involved in it. We are not even asking anyone. It's all pure blessings. It's all Guru Namah Shivaya. Who is doing that? That's why I said, this is the most powerful of all the meditations I have taught you. 
I want you to experience these miracles. The only condition is that when you uh, get some returns, when you manifest, donate a very small percentage of it to my foundation so that I will spend this money for disseminating this knowledge to more people. Very only a very small percent, like um, 3 percent. Ninety-seven percent you can keep it. Three <laughs> hmm? percent. This will work. This is the covenant between you and Guru Namah Shivaya.